انت العنوان واحلى الاوطان في نظري يا حبك مطبوع فيني ومزروع من صغري يا انت العنوان واحلى الاوطان في نظري حبك مطبوع فيني ومزروع من صغري في العنوان واحلى الاوطان في نظري يا بلادي حبك مطبوع فيني ومزروع من صغري Tarim al Ghana is a deep rooted historical Yemeni city. It is located at the northeastern part of Seyun city in Hadramaut Valley, where Al Masila Valley begins. The distance between Tarim and Seyun is about 34 kilometers, and between Tarim and the capital of Hadramaut, Al Mukalla, is about 356 kilometers. According to the ancient engraving, Tarim was sited at the beginning of the 4th century when it was besieged by Al Sabain. It was the capital of ancient Hadramaut and named after the name of its king, Tarim bin Hadramaut bin Saba al Asqar. It is the place of the kings of Amir bin Muawi's tribe. One of these kings is Abu al Khir, who went to the king of Persians to get help upon bin. Al Hart bin Muawi. It was the center and capital of Kinda tribe, the tribe of the well known Arabic poet Umrao al Qais. It has an area of about 3,500 square kilometers. The most of the area is almost flat plains. Tarim has an agricultural soil which is rich in organic matter and contains sandy and alluvial precipitates. The soil spread in the western, east and the northern east directions of the area. It also stores enormous amounts of groundwater in wells which people use for house and agricultural purposes. Generally, the climate of Tarim is relatively continental with hot summers and cold winters. The location of Tarim has a big trading, military and civilized importance. Tarim has been a trading center since the period before Islam. Burdens of incense came to it through caravans for storing and exportation. Also, the products of the Hadramaut Valley, like grain, dates, and fabrics, passed through it. Therefore, the way of incense was founded, which was known as one of the most famous trading ways in history. However, the military importance of its location comes from the highlands which surround the city from almost every side. The people of Tarim are Gataniyon and Adnaniyon who belong to Kinda tribe and Jafar, Said al Asira and Bani Hashim and there are no other colonies. Presently its population is 100,670 according to the general consensus in 2004. The population practices a lot of economic activities. 
The job of architectural building is the common job in the city because a large sector of the population works as builders. Some work in farms and other people work in service and trading. However, the other jobs are handcrafts, some of them declined in the recent time and some resisted because there was no competition between them and foreign products. The most important of these local industries or handcrafts are weaving and dyeing industry pottery, palm leaf products the production of leaden products sesame oil extracting the production of iron products building materials gold and silver industry and finally furniture industry Tarim contains masterpieces of unique ancient landmarks which are considered as the object of the visitors sightseeing and the aim of the tourists. The most important ones of these landmarks are Al Rinad Castle. Presently Al Rinad Castle is called Al Shab Castle. It is an old castle used as a palace for the rulers. It was built a long time ago before Christ. It was mentioned that it was built before the revelation to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi by 400 years. It was mentioned that it was built 400 years prior to the revelation to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The countries which followed one another in Tarim before and after Islam used it as a center of government. Nowadays it has been appointed to be the biggest center for cultural development in Yemen, al or Castle. It is considered as one of the most famous castles in Tarim. It is the remains of an ancient castle located on a rocky hill that rises 50 feet above the level of the valley. It was available since the period before Islam. The castle contains a number of ancient ornamented pieces. People can go up to the castle from the southeastern direction through a windy rocky passage. In addition to these castles, there are many other castles such as Mutahar Castle, Bin Duban Arudud Castle, Awad Castle, Garama Castle, Nafidamun Castle, Mugadam Al Yamani Castle in Gassam. It also contains some palaces such as Al Gubba Palace. Asalam Palace, Tarim Palace, Esi Palace, and Al Kaf Palace. Zambal is one of the famous graveyards of Tarim where some of the noble companions of our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, are buried. Another famous graveyard is Jabanat Tarim, which was established in 566 after Hijra. The wall of the city, which some tourists compare to the wall of China, Presently, only small parts of it remain. This is because of the random planning of building in the city. It was built long time ago in the past to keep danger off and help in making security of the city stable. Then many changes and renewals were made for this wall.
Tarim city is famous of its builders who could create rare architectural masterpieces which made the city compete eastern and western schools of arts and architecture. The most prominent thing in Tarim architecture is that its buildings are built of mud mixed with straw and painted by Al Nura, a white substance made of burnt stones, to give in the end palaces, castles and houses which makes visitors dazzle by their unique style and resistance through historical periods. Tarim has had an architectural movement since the 12th century after Hijra and it had reached the peak of its progress at the beginning of the 14th century Hijra. Because the factor of migration to Indonesia, Singapore and India had a great effect on the progress of Tarim architecture. شكرك على استضافتك هذه وبغينا منك شويه اسئله هكذا بنسالك عن حول العماره الطينيه في سواء على وجه العموم في حضر موت وعلى وجه الخصوص في مدينه تريم يعني المعاناه لو يعانونها هو معاناه اكثر من ما هو نعم هو كان الناس ما في وسائل يعني كما عربيات وعربيات كان يحملون بالمشدة وبالمحافظ يأخذون المدر على ظهورهم على ظهور نعم. يعني وعلى من هو يمشي المشدة واللي هو يعمل له حوية ويشيل له مثلا عن همته يعني أربع مدر خمس مدر عند همته يقوم لك طين نعم. طين وتبل ويخمرونها أيوة وفي مفتل للمدر هذا المفتل هذا ايوه حق المدر هذا أيوة. في نعم. مدر على قولهم صغير مم. في مدر كبير وفي انواع المدر يعني أيوة. في مدر اقول لك اول كان في اقول لك ذراع صبعين والان في مدر ذراع عند هذا اول طابق يجي مثلا ابو ذراع ذراع صبعين وثاني دور يجي ابو ذراع To make mud bricks first builders gather mud and spray on it then the wet mud is mixed with straw and trampled down strongly until the paste becomes soft enough. After that, the paste is carried on wooden tables called Ari to other builders. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فإن بلدة تريم البلدة المباركة أكرمها الله تبارك وتعالى بدخول الإسلام منذ القرون الأولى توجه الله تبارك وتعالى بواسطة بعض أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولما حصل الارتداد بعد وفاة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم من كثير من البلدان ومنعهم الزكاة كانت هذه البلاد هي من أعظم البلدان التي قامت مع سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه فهي بلدة تسمى باسم الصديق أيضا كما تسمى باسم تريم كما تسمى مع ضواحيها باسم أحد السلاطين الذين كانوا فيها وهو السلطان بن راشد الذي كان يحفظ صحيح البخاري قد قام فيها بالعدل كما سميت بمسميات كثيرة كلها ترجع إلى ما إلى أنها مدينة العلم والعلماء ومدينة الأخلاق فنسأل الله عز وجل أن يديم الأمن فيها والعلم فيها والأخلاق فيها وفي جميع بلاد المسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها وأن ينفع بها وبلاد المسلمين قاطبة والحمد لله رب العالمين Tarim is very famous for its scientific institutions which has distinguished religious status. They were established lo a long time ago and they still receive students every year from different areas in the world. The students come to Tarim to take a lot of its pure scientific and spiritual provision which does not stop. Malamat Abi Muraim is one of its most important ancient scientific center which has continued up to now. It was named that name after its owner, Al Alama, the scholar Muhammad ibn Omar ibn Muhammad ibn Ahmed ibn Al Fagi. Murayyam is the reduction of Murayyam, the name of his sole daughter. So he was called Abu Murayyam, the father of Murayyam. The center was established in the 6th century Hijra to teach the Quran and help people memorize it by heart. Another famous religious institution in Tarim is Al Ribat which is located in the center of Tarim and established in 1304 Hijra. It is one of the most distinguished centers which concerns to teach the Quran, 
the Quranic sciences and the interpretation and all other sciences of Islamic law. It has a distinguished role in the spread of knowledge and in graduating scholars and callers to Allah the Exalted. Also, Darul Mustafa for Islamic studies is one of its famous centers which was established in 1414 after Hijra and opened in the 29th of Dil Hijjah in 1417 after Hijra. It has an important role in teaching the Quran and the sciences of Islamic law. It is followed by another house for women teaching which is called Dar al-Zahra for Islamic studies. The College of Islamic Law which is one of the colleges of al aqaf University and established in 1440 after Hijra in 1994 is considered as an important center in Tarim. al Husin bin Salama, who was one of the masters of al Ziyadian country and became the ruler of Yemen in 375 after Hijra, built mosques in Tarim. Therefore, Tarim is famous for its enormous number of mosques, which has almost exceeded 360. So this number is relatively considered very huge when it's compared to the size and population of Tarim. Then this number decreased because of the emergence of the large mosques which hold large numbers of worshippers. Therefore presently there are about a hundred mosques which are still full of worshippers. One of the most famous mosques in Tarim is al Jamia mosque which is located in the center of the city. It was built over a thousand years ago between 375 to 402 Hijra. It is narrated that it was built in Husn bin Salama's reign. Then it was rebuilt and enlarged several times until it became as it is now after its final expansion in 1392 after Hijra after which its size reached 19,110 square feet. It has 60 cylindrical props. The diameter of each one is 16 inches. The mosque has eight doors and it is ornamented by the minaret which was built in the middle of the eastern wall of the mosque. The height of this minaret is 115 feet. Besides Al Jamia Mosque, there are other mosques in Tarim which are as beautiful, large and good design as it is. These mosques are like Bin Alawi Mosque which is considered as one of the most famous mosques in Tarim and is filled with worshippers. It was old and founded by Imam Ali Bin Alawi in around 350 after Hijra. Also, Al Muhdar Mosque is one of the most famous mosques in Tarim. It was built by Umar Al Muhdar bin Abdul Rahman Al Saqaf. It is a destination for Tarimi visitors because of its distinguished, beautiful architecture, especially its high minaret, which consists of seven floors and is considered as a masterpiece in architecture. Its height is almost 175 feet. It is square and it has stairs to go up to its peak. It was built around 1333 after Hijra. The strange and amazing thing is that although it is very high, it was built of the mud bricks and the trunks of palm trees. It was designed by the poet and writer Abu Bakr bin Shihab, who died in 1334 after Hijra. And it was fulfilled by the builder Awad Suleiman Afif At-Tarimi. However, the most ancient mosque in Tarim is that mosque which is called al wail Mosque, which was founded by Ahmed bin Abad bin Bisr al-Ansari, the grandfather of Al-Khatib Atarimian. al ahqaf Library is the most famous library among all libraries in Tarim. It is located in the ground floor of the building of al Jamia Mosque which has just been mentioned previously. The foundation of this library was necessary because of the huge number of the manuscripts in Tarim city and the surrounded cities of it. 
There were some famous families adored gathering and buying manuscripts and books in different fields of sciences and knowledge. Therefore, al ahqaf Library was established in 1970 after an expert Egyptian delegation made a study to gather the manuscripts in it. Today, this library contains about 5,300 books and manuscripts in different fields of science and knowledge, such as interpreting of glorious Quran, doctrine, hadith, saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, language, conjugation, literature, history, the prophetic biography, medicine, mathematics, astronomy, and other sciences. These books and manuscripts are considered as rare masterworks of valuable manuscripts, which their value comes of their rarity, antiquity, or because they are original manuscripts. There are many exciting customs and traditions belonging to Tarim and distinguish it as one of the cities of Hadramaut Valley. These customs and traditions are still cared by people of Tarim. In Allah's month Al-Muharram, the first month of Hijrah calendar, there is a ceremony of the beginning of the year. The ceremony begins on the 28th of Dhul Hajjah, the last month of the Hijrah year. On this occasion, relatives meet for a big dinner prepared with the meat of backbone of sheep or goats. In this ceremony, there are many songs sung by children who spread in streets holding al kibidi A small bunch consists of palm trees, leaves especially of al-Madini type. Also, some parts of other trees are added to it, such as trees of pomegranate, lemon, pepper and other green grass with nice perfume. So this bunch has a beautiful look which may be admired by visitors. On the tent of Al Muharram, there's a ceremony of Ashura as it is known. Tarim has a privacy in this day. With fasting this day, also, people in Tarim hold popular traditional games. Also, they have some special meals like Al Mahshi and dry bread. In Rajab month, the seventh month of Hijra year, there's a reminiscence of Al Ishra and Al Miraj. The journey of our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, to Jerusalem in Palestine and is going up to the sky. Also some historians said that Islam entered Tarim in the first days of this month. To honor Tarim, which is considered one of the ancient Islamic sources, and to confess Tarim's superiority to many of Islamic cities, the Islamic Organization of Science, Education and Culture, ASISCO, selected Tarim to be the capital of Islamic culture in 2010. This selection is a medal on the breast of Tarim, an honor for its old and contemporary scholars, for the enormous and blessed efforts they have made to serve and spread Islamic religion, and also for its Islamic history, which full of scientific and mental giving and because of what it contains of distinguished Islamic architectural landmarks. <laughs>